I was like, you guys, clean up. We're getting a kid today. And so they're like, you just want us to clean up, mom. Right. And I was like, no, clean up. They're bringing a child. And so my oldest was not a happy camper about it. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back with my friend Annette Brown. And today we are talking about foster care and adoption, which I know is a ministry that so many of you as homeschool families are involved with in one way or another. Maybe it's not even you who's involved in foster care adoption, but you probably have friends who are maybe friends from church, friends in your homeschool community, friends somewhere or family who's involved. And so we're going to talk about that um, today. But before we do, I want to say thank you again to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you are looking for a great, solid biblical worldview curriculum for your kids, whatever grade, whatever age, whatever subject it is, check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. They have lessons that encourage critical thinking. They have activities and lessons that support multisensory learning. Um, they, they have all sorts of flexible options for buying. So you can do online learning, you can do parent-led learning, you can do whatever fits your lifestyle and is best for your homeschool. Check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, I want to say thank you again to those of you who continue to support this ministry financially. We are so beyond grateful for you because we couldn't do what we do without the support of our sponsors and our donors. And we love what we do. We love being able to encourage you as um, the homeschooling community and, and equip you with what you need to be able to homeschool your kids and, and disciple their hearts with excellence. And without uh, your donations and without our sponsors, we couldn't do this. So thank you so much uh, for those of you who continue to support us financially. You can do that through our website at schoolhouserocked.com. Also, if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, you can do that through our website as well. Well, Nanette, uh, welcome back. This has been such a fun conversation this week. I've been so encouraged by um, talking about leadership and how to raise our kids to become leaders. So if you are listening and you missed Monday's episode and yesterday's episode, go back and listen to those. But today I want to talk about foster care and adoption. And I know that this is one way you talked about one way to to help uh, foster leadership in our kids is to... um, teach them to serve, right? Teach them to be selfless. And I can't think of a better way to do that than through foster care and through the ministry of adoption. And so maybe start off by kind of telling us a little bit about your story. How did your family get into foster care? You shared that you've, you've got four biological kids and then you've got two adopted children. And then you have another child who's who was your first foster child, though she's not in the system anymore, but you're just loving on her and and um, she is part of your family for right now. So talk about how you even got involved in the foster care system and how that led to adoption for your family. So we always, we had four kids and I think I was personally yearning for more children, but my husband was like, no, we're done. And um, he mentioned, okay, well, why don't we, why don't we adopt? Let's consider adoption. And so I was like, oh, I don't know. And then it ended up in our homeschool community. We met um, a family, a mutual great friend of ours. um, And she had adopted two of her daughters. And I remember her sharing that. And I was so shocked because I had no clue they were adopted. It just messed so well. And so she shared her story with me. And I remember going home, excitedly sharing that same story with um, my husband. And he was like, okay, so maybe we should consider doing, you know, foster to adopt. So that's kind of how we got into it. And she had recommend, you know, go with an agency. They're kind of your middleman between, you know, child services and yourself. And so that's how we uh, got into it. And that was about seven years ago. And so the process of getting into child uh, foster care was quite intense. You have to get your home ready. They have to interview you and your children. You have to go to all these classes. You have to say you're going to go by their rules. And so it was a quite, it was quite an intense process that took almost a year, probably about nine months or so to go through. So that's what, how we began our process, how we, the reason for getting into it. Our goal was to adopt, not necessarily to foster. 
Yeah. So, so you had to go through the foster system in order to get to the adoption. And I know that there's lots of different ways to get to adoption and, you know, the Lord brings kids in so many different uh, ways to different families. You know, maybe it's a family member, uh, but some people just want straight adoption. Um, But you chose to take the route of foster care. What impact has that had on your family? So maybe kind of start from the beginning of of having your first foster child and how did that impact your family? I mean, was I imagine it was hard probably at some times because now all of a sudden you've got this child in your home who you didn't birth. So you've not, you know, there's a transition that happens more naturally, of course, when mommy's pregnant, mommy goes to the hospital or birthing center, whatever, has the baby. And now there's a new baby in your home and everybody is, anticipates this baby. But foster care is so different than that. Right, right. So at the time um, when we got our first child, Um, The child was one and my youngest was about five, about to turn six. Okay. Okay? And then my oldest was about 13, about 13 years old, 12 or 13. And so luckily for our family, usually most everything we do is kind of like a family decision. Not that they're making the decision, but they're a part of it. Sure. So, um, Luckily, my kids actually like little kids. So it wasn't like, oh, why are we doing this? You know, Um, so it was like exciting for my younger kids or for my kids. But I can tell you this later on after having several kids, like my son that we adopted, my three-year-old for my oldest, who is now in college, when he first came into our home back in 2020, she was livid. She was mm. absolutely against it. She actually thought I was joking because he came on um, April Fool's Day. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I was like, you guys, clean up. We're getting a kid today. And so they're like, you just want us to clean up, mom. Right. And I was like, no, <laughs> clean up. They're bringing a child. And so my <laughs> oldest was not a happy camper about it. Um, she actually just told me this like last year. Um, oh. She ended up, yeah, she really resented it because she was like, oh, this is work on me because right. we, when we have kids, it's not just me. I'm like, okay, sure. I yeah. need you to change a diaper or can you make a bottle or, you know, right. everybody kind of has different responsibilities. Right. She was done because that's not her personal part. Sure. You know? She's yeah. not as into kids as her younger siblings were. Did you know that at the time? Did you know that she was struggling with it? I knew she was not in favor because I asked, hey, you guys think we should get a child? But And three were like, yeah. yay! And she was like, no. But she uh. she was more, it was like, no. But she didn't talk. She didn't keep talking about it. Sure. But And the majority of us all, and then my husband was like, if you want to. And then I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So yeah. it was kind of like, we kind of went into it like that. But I didn't yeah. realize how against it she was, mm. but it's interesting. This was 2020. We're now 2023. That little boy that came into our home that is now her little brother, mm. they are like this. Wow. She loves him so much mm. and he loves her so much. I mean, he loves all of us and we love yeah. you know, him. But, but they have a special cool. connection. Yeah. So it just shows like we can't always be led. We have to consider our children's feelings sure. for sure. But yeah. I can't let your, I can't let you make the decision, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I I was aware that she was not in favor, but I didn't realize how against it she was right. until yeah. just last year. She's like, when he came, I was so mad. Mm. But now it took me months to really love him. And now they're like this. Wow. Wow. That's, so, yeah. that's an incredible testimony because it is hard sometimes when we feel like the Lord is calling us to do something as parents. Yeah. And our kids are like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. And it could yeah. be something big. It could be something small. It could be a move. It could be, you know, it could be bringing another child into your home. I mean, there are so many things and that's hard to navigate, but ultimately we have to listen to the Lord. Like what is exactly. the Lord calling? And, and, and like you did be willing to do the hard thing because you know, it's what the Lord's calling you to do. Yeah. And trusting that the Lord is going to work on her heart yeah. And somehow use it for her good yeah. in the end. And so what what a beautiful story to look back on that. 
You and know? what we did too uh, was we minimized her responsibilities with the mm. baby because we knew she wasn't as enthusiastic sure. as the rest of us were. So that's that was like kind of a compromise we made. Like instead of requiring her, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? We kind of, she still did stuff, but it wasn't as much because I knew she wasn't happy. So right. I wasn't like pushing him on her, you know? Right, right. So yeah. Yeah. And what a wise mom for you to be able to be so in tune with her and her feelings and emotions, because you don't want those kids to then feel like you're pushing them aside. And because, because I know we've had enough friends who have done foster care. Yeah. I know that when a new child comes into your home, it completely derails your family and your home. Yeah. And yeah. for a time, at least it seems like everything is about that child because they are so needy oftentimes. Yeah. Absolutely. that they need all of mom's attention yeah, and all of everyone's attention. I mean, they really do take over. So how did you, how did you work through, and we'll take a break before you answer this question, but, but when we come back, I want to talk about like, how did you work through that with homeschooling? Because yeah. you were homeschooling four kids and now you're bringing new children into your home, but you still have these other kids to homeschool. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Nanette. Uh, so as I asked before the break, talk about how you walked through bringing new children into your home because you've had... You've had a few, I mean, I remember you, we were, we were doing life with you when you were just in the very beginning stages of getting your house ready and, and going yeah. through the system. Um, so you've had five come through your home. Yeah. Okay. I have two of which we've adopted of the five. Yeah. What did family life and homeschooling look like for you? And how did you navigate through that? So for us, um, when we went into foster care, we went in asking for uh, babies or young children. So everyone that we got was typically under one years old when they arrived in our home. And mm -hmm. so, you know, newborns bring about different challenges. They need to be held, fed, they're completely dependent. Yeah. And so um, our issues weren't, I, I feel it was a little more, it was a little easier in my opinion than maybe having a 12 year old that just, you know, has been placed in several homes. Sure. It was, it was a more, it was fun and challenging at the same time because mm -hmm. you're dealing with the baby and they're slowly growing and, and stuff. So we've kind of enjoyed that aspect of it. And the challenges would just be the dependent, like the child is dependent and you can't yeah. just go out. Like I used to be able to just go, Hey guys, I'm going to store. I'll be right back. Right. Like I can't just, just run and go, you know? Yeah. So it was stuff like that or it was sleep. You know, oh, yeah. um, a child not sleeping through the night. So it was kind of more like my issues. Yeah. But you know what the Lord did do for me in that season? Because I remember struggling with just like those regular baby uh -huh. issues that moms have, like they're young and I'm not getting sleep and time yeah. for myself. Like the Lord did bless me with one of the my most favorite things to do, even till this day, and that's working out. Um, mm. I was able to, I don't know how this happened, but I got a gym membership and I would go when my kids were sleeping and my husband was sleeping. And that became like, kind of like the me time for me. And sure. that made a huge difference for me and my mental health, my peace, yeah. because it was like something I think I internally craved and then God blessed me with it. Yeah. And I did it before. And I feel like that actually helped me in strengthened me to be better for my family. Yeah. And yeah. so, but I, I do feel for us, like getting babies has made it a much easier process than getting mm -hmm. a child that has been wounded, you know, from mm -hmm. different home to home. And so I feel like our process was much more joyous and sure. it wasn't that bad. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that though for a minute. Cause you and I have a mutual friend who they've, yeah. they've been in the foster system for a yeah. long time and they have, you know, they, they've had a couple of kids come into their home who have been through the system. They've been yeah. in the system for years. Yes. They have been, you know, 
desperately wounded. I mean, it's been such a hard thing to watch, but this family has just said, you know what, Lord, you're going to give us what we need. And they have loved on these kids and just incorporated them into their family. So how would you encourage a family who maybe they don't want the newborn baby or, you know, the less than one-year-old baby, Yeah, but they're going to bring another child into their home who is very needy and yeah. also comes with a lot of trauma. Um, how would you encourage that family? How I would encourage them. And I, I, the family that you're talking about, I love and speak to on a regular basis yeah. is number one support. I feel like the reason why me and that um, wife have connected, uh, the, the mom has connected yeah. so well is because we understand to a degree each other's journey. Sure. A lot of times she, she feels like, let me call Lynette because she gets it. You know, when you're talking yeah. to someone who doesn't have, hasn't been through the system, they're not unable to fully understand. But yeah. I think support is extremely important. Connecting with other uh, foster parents, Christian foster parents, so you guys mm -hmm. can pray together. Because not only do we share our burdens or the challenges, we pray with each other. We encourage yeah. each other. Uh. Um so the support is huge, like one-on-one -on -one support, maybe becoming a part of some sort of uh, support right. group. We're a part of this phenomenal support group here in California called Foster All. Um, they minister to uh, foster families and adopted families and just mm. do fun fun things. Like on Saturday, we're going, they're paying for movies for us all to go to the movies, like some new oh. Christmas movie. and. So they do fun activities. So that support is extremely important. Connecting yeah. with other families because it can be extremely isolating when you're going through this on your own. Yes, mm. sharing it fr with friends, but they don't understand. Um, also, I, I think that's like the, the biggest thing. And then like having family meetings, you have to get your kids on board. You guys kind of all have to have like strategies and game plans like currently. We have um, my first foster child. She's now living with us again. We're her short-term guardian because uh -huh. I'm out of So she's not care. in the system anymore. She's not. Her mom, but yeah. her mom is having challenges. So she's asked, yeah. she asked us if we could take her back mm -hmm. for some time. So we've agreed, you know, but she had to sign her over to us. But yeah. even that, I, um, I was telling you before the show, has been challenging because when we had her at first, she was one. Now she's right. eight. Right. And she's come into our home. We have like systems in place. We have things in place. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And now this eight-year-old's coming into the picture. So what we've had to do is we've set expectations. We've said, this is the standard of our home. Totally not perfect. You know, she mm -hmm. does the best she can. Sure. But I'm constantly like teaching and reminding and training and correcting and yeah. hugging and fixing and, you right. know. Um, so I just think it's important. We're all on the same page. I feel like yeah. having those family meetings with your biological kids and the foster kids and mm -hmm. like, this is the standard. This is what, like my husband just did this again. Remember I told you about the bickering in the last show. Yeah. We got a lot of bickering. The bickering is actually the eight-year-old with the three and five-year-old. That's oh. <laughs> where the fighting is. Yeah. Like it's really, we're not used to this. Sure. And so we've had to have a meeting about it. And my husband's like, yeah. hey, teach them about peace, you know, like stop yeah. fighting. Um, so being kind of all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, also, you said something that God will provide your needs. If he's called you to this, he's yeah. going to give you the grace that you need to do it. And so you might have to be clinging to Jesus to bring you through because you life is in season. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> We've had where the child is great, but the challenges are with the with the social workers or the challenges right. are with the parents, you know. So it doesn't mean it's not always the child. Sometimes the child just comes in and meshes so beautifully, but you have problems with the system or the parent. So with everything, if he's called you to it, he will give you what you need. Yeah. But I would say don't walk this walk alone. Make sure mm. you're connecting being intentional about finding people that you can connect with. Yeah. In oh, this that's journey so good. Of foster care. So what would you say to a, a you know, parent or parents? Because it's one thing, and, and we talked a little bit about how maybe your kids aren't fully on board with it, but you know that this is what God's calling you to do. And so I would say, just like with homeschooling, 
if mom and dad are both not completely on board, you absolutely should not move yeah, forward with trying I to, to find, I mean, like that's, yeah. that would be impossible. You know, both yeah. husband and wife need to be 100% on board with one another to do this. But you've got a family maybe who they're thinking, you know, okay, I, I think that maybe God's calling us to adopt or to foster or something to just speak into the lives of these other needy children. Um, how how do they get started? I, I, I mean, again, it's kind of like homeschooling. You know, people are like, I think I'm supposed to homeschool, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get started. I have literally no idea what the first step is besides prayer, because prayer should always be your first step. You know, first yeah. mom and dad decide together. Second, you know, pray about it together as a couple and then talk to your family. But what would be the next logical step to, okay, now we're going to move forward with this. Okay. So the next logical step after prayer, you guys, okay, let's go ahead and pursue this would be, you'd have two choices. You can go online and look up foster agency, like in California, it's called Foster Family Agency or FFA. Okay. And an FFA is like an, a go-between. So the child services here in California, we call it Department of Family and Child Services, DCFS. Mm -hmm. So they will retain children or take children from families for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And then they will call an FFA. So they have multiple, like in California, they have Penny Lane. They have child share. They have, all, uh, uh, I forget all the names, yeah, but there's several. Yeah. So there's several. So you can contact an FFA and there are so many different benefits of going with an FFA. You can look that up online, but mm -hmm. you can call an FFA and say, hey, I'm interested in possibly fostering. What, how do I begin? And usually they'll tell you we're going to have a, like an orientation and then they'll walk you through the guidelines of what the process looks like because you, mm -hmm. before you can foster, you have to go through like a process, an approval process. Sure. Some places it'll take, a, you know, two months, 90 days, whatever. Yeah. Some, it will take quite a long time. Yeah. So that's your first choice, your first option. Your second option is going directly to your state agency, your straight, your state's department of uh, family and child services, mm -hmm. whatever, wherever they retain kids. Sure. And so look that up online. You would just call the receptionist and say, hey, I'm interested in, in fostering. And you can foster directly with uh, your state agency. Um, and you would just have to walk through their process as well. There would be probably mm -hmm. some sort of an orientation meeting. And then um, once you qualify, go through all the steps, you then become a certified foster family. Okay. And so... That's what it would look like. It's not difficult, but some of the things, what I've learned, okay, they'll say, these are the rules. You have to do this, 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 and this. But then once you, uh, which usually deters people sure. from doing it, because they're like, what? Every time someone walks through my house, I have to have them sign in and then give it to you. Um, I feel like they say that, but they don't enforce it. So a lot mm. of things, that's what I found. They sure. say like you have to do all these things and people are like, oh, and it seems it. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh no, I'm not about to do all this, but we did it anyways. Like we still went through it, even though we were like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. But we realized they don't even enforce a lot of what they say you have to do. That, that yeah. at least was our experience. And so I think it's yeah. worth it. The system is difficult. I can't yeah. say um, it's not fun having people come to your house every week or once sure. a month, but it is what it is. It's worth it because two of my beautiful children, I got from foster mm. to adopt. Yeah. So it was all I would worth say it. rescued them yeah. <laughs> as opposed to God. Exactly. God. You rescued these children yeah. and you know, you're, you're having the opportunity to share family with them and share Jesus with them and yeah. raise them up to be warriors for Christ, raise them up to be leaders. Yep. And, you know, so exactly. I, I wish that with all that foster families and adoptive families have to go through in order to foster and adopt, I wish that normal people had to go through those things before they became parents, right? I Could know. you imagine? I know. I mean, there wouldn't even be so a much. foster system if, if yeah. people had to go through 
training classes and, and, you know, approval in order to, which obviously that's not how the Lord designed it to happen, but it seems like, okay, I wish that maybe these, some of these parents would have gone through an approval process before they, uh, you know, had this child, but you know, every child, um, I mean, we strongly, obviously believe in the value of life and the sanctity of life. And we're so grateful because every single one of these lives matter and and they all come with different stories every one of these kids some of them have you know no baggage yet at all and they come to you fresh out of the womb and you get yeah. to just raise them up um as you do and then others come to you with lots and lots of tragedy behind them and um it, and it's hard but god uses families like yours Nanette to love these kids and to show them Jesus and so many other families that we have yeah. so May I say something real quick? Sure. Because um, the the family that you you and our mutual friend they yeah. mentioned, as I've been walking with um, her, mm-hmm. uh, I've seen how it the the experience has felt overwhelming. But every step of the way, God gives them that the the wisdom yeah. that they need. I see how God continues to step in. And make a way for the family, make a way for the child, provide the services and what they need. So I want to encourage um, the audience, don't let the difficulties deter you. If you Mm. feel called to this, if you have a heart for kids, I'm telling you, like I know, God will provide everything you need emotionally, mentally, physically, the services that the child needs. He will. He's faithful. Yeah, he is so good. Well, Nanette, thank you so much for being with us this week. It has been such a pleasure getting to chat with you. I wish I could just yeah. hug your neck in person. I miss yeah, you. I, no, no, no. I hate that you're 2,000 miles away from me. <laughs> um, but man, you you are my sister in Christ, and I'm so yeah. thankful for your friendship and for thank your encouragement you. this week. Thank you for raising up uh, this next generation of leaders. And again, we'll put a link to Nanette's um, YouTube channel so you guys can check it out. She's got some really fun videos on there. She She's interview, interviewing these kids, um, these, these Gen Z kids. And uh, the, these are kids who are Christian leaders. And she's talking to them about what it looks like to be Christian leaders. She's got some really fun videos on there. So we'll put links to that in the show notes as well. Um, You guys stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next. And again, you can find everything at schoolhouserocked.com. You can stream the movie, download the survival kit, make a donation to support the ministry or subscribe to our newsletter. Nanette, thank you again for being with us. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Have a great rest of your week. And we will see you back here on Monday with another fantastic guest. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness. I have one of my absolute favorite people on the planet here in the studio with me, my BFTR. You guys are probably wondering what a BFTR is. Well, let me tell you, bestie for the resty. (laughs) This is my best friend, (laughs) Crystal Coleman, and you guys have probably heard me mention her name before. She's the math nerd. She's the math geek that I talk about, but you're so much more than just a math nerd. Thanks. I know. (laughs) I mean, if it were just math, we probably wouldn't be such good friends because I hate math and everybody knows I hate math, but you're so much more than that. We'll, We'll talk about those things this week on the podcast, but she is here in Oklahoma and we are having such a good time. And this is really funny because we got requests from you, our audience saying, we want to hear from just a regular homeschool mom. So when I knew she was coming, I didn't tell her until she got here, but I was like, I think I'm going to ask Crystal if she wants to be on the podcast with me because she's a regular homeschool mom. I guess what, what people would consider a regular homeschool mom, but Crystal hasn't written 50 books on homeschooling. Nope. She doesn't have a homeschooling podcast. She is a normal, regular homeschool mama. Bonafide, regular lady. Right. Yep. 